there are so many things that are happening in the world. But we need to be informed so that we will not say tomorrow, I did not know. Yes, there are so many things that are happening. Yes, we are living in those times which the prophets, Messiah, the word, and the apostles spoke of. We have seen evil that even surpass all evil after the flood. There is confusion in the heart of man. We can see <clears throat> they are openly worshiping the Baphomet, which is Saturn. We can see the heart of man that has become as hard as a stone, where a man would chop hands of his fellow brothers because he wanted to send a message that people should work hard in order to enrich himself. Men, people are confused. They don't know what to do. Although men are seeking the worshiping of the true Elohim, but they are hindered by the false doctrine that has been peddled time and time again. The doctrine of cupidity is now full. You see people, churches are having ATM machines within their buildings. Even at this time when there was Corona where people were not going to, to these churches, pastors were on air demanding tithe from their already strained believers. People are so much in love of knowing the truth, but the doctrine of cupidity has hindered them. The word of Elohim has been neglected for the love of money and made to play second fiddle to the doctrine of man, which is the doctrine of the demons. We can see people are pushing away the word and we can see churches are having ATMs so that you can just use your card to pay your tithe. Meanwhile, when you look at the pastors, they are now flying in jets. All this, it is for their own benefit, not for the benefit of the, of the sheep. Those who have come to know the name of Elohim have been confused by the ones bringing new names as they try to inter interpret uh, the Hebrew language. As if it is only those that shall seek, speak Hebrew that shall be saved to the detriment of life to those who listen. Yet in the book of Isaiah, it is written, I am Yahweh, that is my name forgetting or ignoring the fact that there is only one name of which we can be saved. According to Joel 2 verse 32, it says, for it shall be all those who shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be saved for salvation shall be in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. As Yahweh said, and among the survivors whom Yahweh shall call. Some people unknowingly have been made to worship the beast due to the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Some people have been chained in their minds that they do not know they have a mental slavery that is within them. But it is high time we should break those chains and be free as we know the truth. For it is written that when we know the truth, the truth shall set us free. But people are being led. Many people are lead, being led 
to wider roads, which Matthew 17 verse 3 spoke of. Hence Yahweh said in Isaiah 6 verse, uh, 4 verse 6, my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. Yes, indeed, people are perishing as, the, as they deny knowledge, hanging on the tradition of man. Matthew 7, verse 13, it reads, Go in through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and the many are the ones entering through it. For those who are fooled by the tradition of men, they have been made to worship idols, idols in form of crosses, in form of an image of man, and in form of statues that are of Ma Maria, Mary. This is the same as what happened in the time of Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar erected a statue for people to worship. Tell me, my brothers, when you see these two um, pictures, is there any difference? These were worshiping the statue of Nebuchadnezzar and here they are worshiping the statue of the Roman Catholic, the statue of Mary. Many people are no longer interrogating the scriptures for answers pertaining to the set apart living. They are going with their gut feel in line with this Sikh society, which is under the rulership of Saturn. There are no studying of the scripture. There is no checking and comparing the scriptures, but they are happy to just thumbs up, thumbs suck the religion and whatever they feel is good, then they do it. Some fighting to be politicians with the little knowledge that we are in the world, but we are not part of the world. Neglecting the fact that we are the salt of the earth. They don't know that when religion meet politics, it is a crossroad where the true believers must not be found in anything that deals with politics. For you are the salt of the earth, which must cause discomfort to this world. My brethren, is the doctrine of your church in line with the worldview in areas of love and romance Disciplining of children, treatment of spouses, mercy and forgiveness, euthanasia, homosexuality, marriage, divorce and politics. Are you transformed by the renewal of your mind from the world's view in order to be proven by you what is good and pleasing and perfect will of Elohim? Is your church doctrine based on the word and the will of Abaya and the acceptance of Yahweh as the Messiah who came from the Father? What does the church doctrine say in comparison to the word of him? In all that which you have been receiving from your church, have you tested the spirit to see if it is from Abaya as recommended by the very word of Yahweh in 1 John 4 verse 1. If you have done so, what does your church doctrine regarding divorce? We need to test the spirit does your church allow divorce? Is it in line with the word of Yahweh? Does it accept divorce even though it is written, Yahweh hates divorce in Malachi 2 verse 16. Now you are divorced 
Is it because the God of this world that you have been taught and failed to bring peace in your marriage? Now you have gone and received a divorce certificate. Here we see in Malachi, Yahweh denies divorce. So who are you following? What does the spiritual term, the hardness of heart mean to you? Is it a good quality a true believer should possess of which divorce is based on? What does your church doctrine say regarding the issue of unforgiveness? Does it recommend that one has to deserve forgiveness after attaining a certain milestone in showing remorse? thereby earning his, aiming, earning his or her trust instead of showing love and of judging the fruits, not the person, as according to Matthew 6, verse 15. What does your church doctrine say regarding going to heaven? Whatever they say, is it supported by the word of Yahweh? As in Psalms 115, verse 16, the heavens, the heavens belongs to Yahweh, but he has given the earth to the sons of men. We see people are being taught that there is a rapture when everyone will all of a sudden start flying upward. Is that the doctrine that you are taught in your church rather than the doctrine that people will stay on earth as Yahweh instructed that the heavens only is for him and the earth is for the sons of men. Have you changed yourself not to be a son of man to qualify to be in heaven? What does your church doctrine say regarding salvation? Is it or can it be through any name with the same meaning of salvation in any language? that you understand better or only in Greek and English has been pushed by religion. Can any name save you? It is written in Acts 4 verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What does this mean? That means salvation is only in one name. In one original name, the name that was given, the name of salvation. For we are saved by Yahweh through his son. That's why he is Yahshua, Yahweh's salvation. We know people ignore Acts 4 verse 12 because they still want to go to heaven. They still want things to be easy for them so that they can do anything and call anything and still be led to eternal life. My brethren, are we that naive to think that the doctrines of the Jews and the Pharisees died a natural death? The one that made a claim that they were not the disciples of Yeshua but of Moses, thereby holding tight to the law of Moses. Is this doctrine still available or it died? If this doctrine did not die, the same doctrine that was fighting Messiah and his disciples 
where do we find it today? If we can, the doctrine that is busy putting new wine in old wine skin by forcing the priesthood of Melchizedek into Aaronic priesthood. We all know that when you put new wine into an old wine skin, when there is expansion due to fermentation, the skin would have reached its maximum expenditure, expansion. And then it will burst. And this is exactly what is happening today when people now don't know the difference between the priesthood of Aaron and the priesthood of Melchizedek. And so they are putting Melchizedek priesthood into Aaronic priesthood. And there is going to be a best of the skin. Where do we find today the religious establishment that persecuted the early church? Did it die a natural death as well? Does it mean Satan has been defeated on the religious front? Now the kingdom of the world is under Yahweh. Where do we find that religion? Just that stoned Stephen to death. Where do we find that religion that pushed forward the Spanish Inquisition where it was pulling people, torturing them and even getting horses and they tie them, the hands, the legs and the, the horses will go four different direction and rip the person apart. Where is that religion? Did it die? And some of their brethren can participate fully in the running of this world politics, which Yeshua refused when the Jews wanted to size him and make him their king. So how come you say you are a follower of Yeshua? but you jump for the offer to be involved in, in, in politics. We know that in the times of the Aaronic priesthood, people would jump to do politics, to be kings, to be governors, because the priesthood of Aaron is far different from the priesthood of Melchizedek. The priesthood of Aaron, it is a fleshly priesthood, but Melchizedek priesthood is a spiritual. That's why the Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against principalities, against powers, against world rulers, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. What is your understanding? As we have been taught in regard to false teachers, teachers, prophets, work of powers, and the false messiahs, do they exist? Are they still here? If they are, then where are they coming from and who are they? The scriptures say, by their fruits you shall know them. Brethren, let us read the word. Know the interpretation of the so-called wise. Who happen to be our today's theologians that will come and give us the interpretation, human interpretation of the scriptures instead of the spiritual interpretation of the scriptures. And the book of Jeremiah 8 verse 8, 
it says, those who call themselves wise, but behold, the lying pen of the scribes have written with deceit. These wise theologians, they've interpreted Bibles. They've inter made people to try and understand the Bibles using their own minds, not the mind of the spirit. My brothers and sisters, in Matthew 7, verse 16, it says, From their fruits you shall know them. Do they gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? For we shall stand as individual before the judgment throne on the great day and answer why we allowed ourselves to be deceived by the evil one and his prophets, his teachers, his pastors, his elders. My brethren, being warned is being forearmed. The judgment seat is real. We are living in the time of grace. Let's take advantage of this grace and they do the will of our Father so that we are forgiven, so that we can then enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. My brothers and sisters, incline your ears. Don't say later that I did not know. Let's look at the scriptures. Let's interrogate the scriptures so that we know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we come before you, Father, this afternoon as we ask you, Father, to open our minds Open our hearts, Father, so that we are able to interrogate the scriptures, so that we are able to test the spirit if they are in line with your word. Father, give us the spirit of understanding. And the Father, let us humble ourselves when we are being taught not to be big headed. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. And Father, these words, we pray that we are not just hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, our Messiah, so be it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank so you.